Hello and a very good evening to you all and many thanks for joining us here on Rwanda Television News. We hope you had yourselves a very productive day. Now, top of our edition tonight, these are our headlines. The Kenyan Parliament's delegation of deputies that are on an official visit in Rwanda appreciated the progress made by the Rwanda in unity and reconciliation after the genocide against the Tutsi. The Ministry of Education promises that the government will increase efforts in research to make it more productive because Rwandan researchers have a great opportunity to have research centers and international universities working in Rwanda. Once again, we're very glad to have your company uh, tonight coming to you straight from the heart of Africa, Kigali. My name is Martina Avera. Now, as we begin this edition of the news uh, tonight, let us inform you that on Tuesday, June 6th of 2023, His Excellency uh, President Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, chaired a cabinet uh, meeting uh, at Uruguiro village. The cabinet approved resolutions of the previous meetings held on April 20th and May 8th of 2023. The cabinet approved the following draft laws. Draft law approving a ratification on uh, the financing agreement between uh, the government of Rwanda and the International Development Association for additional financing of the Rwanda Access to Finance for Recovery and Resolution Program. Draft law determining state finances for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Draft law governing Rwanda Development Board. Draft law governing Rwanda Law Reform Commission. Draft law amending law determining offenses and penalties. Draft law amending law relating to the criminal procedure. Draft law amending the law on civil procedure. Draft law governing evidence. The cabinet approved the following orders. Presidential Order Governing National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, Presidential Law Establishing Rwanda Forensic Institute, Presidential Order Governing Rwanda Transport Development Agency, Presidential Order Governing Rwanda Public Procurement Authority, Presidential Order Governing Road Maintenance Fund, Presidential Order Governing Special Guarantee Fund, Prime Minister's Order Determining Mission, Responsibilities and Organizational Structure of the Ministry of National Unity and Civic Engagement, Prime Minister's Under Determining Organizational Structure of the Office of the Ombudsman, Prime Minister's Order Determining the Organizational Structure of Rwanda Atomic Energy Board, Prime Minister's Order Determining the Organizational Structure of the Financial Intelligence Center, Ministerial Order Determining Modalities to Practice the Office of Notary by Private Persons and Modalities to Provide Notarial Services by Electronic Means. The cabinet also approved a presidential order promoting commissioners, senior officers and junior officers of Rwanda National Police and the ministerial order promoting non-commissioned officers and low-ranking officers of national police. The cabinet approved the following policies, programs as well as strategies. Headquarters agreement between the government of Rwanda and the African Medicines Agency, allocation of state land in its private domain to African Medicines Agency, recommendation for Rwandan membership to the Hague Conference on Private International Law, the third country report on implementation of the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of a Child. The cabinet approved the agreement for the following ambassadors, high commissioners, honorary councils, and representative of international organizations. Ms. Einat Weiss, the Ambassador of Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the State of Israel to the Republic of Rwanda with residents in Kigali. Mr. Majid Safar, the Ambassador of Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Islamic Republic of Iran to the Republic of Rwanda with residents in Kampala. Mr. Matthews Jair, High Commissioner of Zambia to the Republic of Rwanda with residents in Dar es Salaam. Mr. Nahim Ula Khan, who is the High Commissioner of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan to Rwanda with residents in Kigali. Mr. Mlondi Solomon Dlamini, High Commissioner of the Kingdom of Eswatini to Rwanda with residents in Maputo. Honorary Council, Professor Dr. Anaimuthu Rejendran, Honorary Council of the Republic of Rwanda to Tamil Nadu State in India. The representative of international organizations, Mr. Bangnoli Andrea, representative of the World Food Program to Rwanda, Mr. Ashley James Carl, Chief of Mission of the International Organization for Migration. 
the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning informed Cabinet of the following. Rwanda reports on evaluation of the first 10-year implementation plan of Agenda 2063 from 2013 to 2023. Rwanda Voluntary National Review Report 2023. The inclusive fintech forum scheduled on the 20th to the 22nd of June 2023. The African Trade Insurance Annual General Meeting scheduled on the 5th to the 7th of July 2023. The Minister of Health informed the Cabinet of the upcoming national campaign to fight against drugs and illicit trafficking scheduled from the 8th to the 26th of June 2023 to raise awareness against drug abuse and encourage abuse victims to seek health and support. The Minister of Sports informed the Cabinet of the following games and events taking place in Rwanda and abroad in 2023 of June. PSG Football Academy World Cup under 11 and 13 years from the 1st to 7th. Tour du Cameroon, which is a cycling from 3rd to 11th. Billy Jean King Cup, the women's tennis competition from 5th to 10th. African 5th Goal Championship Goal Tournament from 5th to 15th. Kigali International Peace Marathon on the 11th. African Cup Qualifiers, also known as AFCON, Rwanda football team will play against Mozambique on the 18th. And the Afro Basket and 16 Zone 5 from 27th to the 30th. This was done on the 6th of Kigali, signed by the Prime Minister, Dr. Edouard Ndirene. Now, as we move on, the newly appointed RDF Chief of Defense Staff Lieutenant General Mubarak Muganga and the RDF Army Chief of Staff Major General Vicent Nyakarundi have officially assumed their responsibilities as of Tuesday after a handover ceremony that took place at RDF headquarters in Chimahurura. The handover and takeover took place in the presence of selected RDF general and senior officers. This comes on after His Excellency President in Paul Kagame, who is the Commander-in-Chief of the RDF, made appointments and changes. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda and Commander-in-Chief of RDF, has promoted Colonel Godfrey Gassana, Deputy Air Force Chief of Staff, to the rank of Brigadier General. Now, security agencies in Rwanda, including uh, the military, police, and RIB, uh, Rwanda Investigation Bureau, in collaboration with the International Committee of Red Cross, ICRC, met uh, in a workshop aimed at reviewing and discussing the maintenance of public safety during the war. These experts confirmed that the security of the population is often greatly compromised during a war. This is a retired colonel, Yusuf Chaur, from Mali very uh, complex environment where civilian fighters and combatants are intermeshed so, and we learn to put the focus of our operation on protecting the civilians. It is not easy to have a, a tool designed for every situation we will encounter so it is better to make sure that the tool you're using can address multiple threats. Among the recommendations of the International Committee of Red Cross is to re-examine how these laws protect civilians. To raise awareness among our uh, military officers, Rwanda Investigation Bureau officers and Rwanda National Police officers so that they can know uh, the standards and the rules to be respected when they are conducting their military and law enforcement operations. So regarding to our mandate, ICRC has a mandate that we stem from the uh, Geneva Convention to disseminate this uh, international humanitarian law as a, a law of armed conflict. This workshop on military in security operations started today and was attended by people from the security agencies, judges, lawyers and prosecutors from different countries and it will end on Thursday this week. The Kenyan Parliamentarian's uh, delegation of uh, deputies that are on an official visit in Rwanda appreciated the progress made by Rwanda in unity and reconciliation after the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi. Olive Nete has more on this report. It's a delegation of five people that are members of the Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity of the Parliament of Kenya who are on a visit in Rwanda in terms of exchanging ideas on how standing committees in the Chamber of Deputies carry out their responsibilities with the aim of contributing to the development of the population of Rwanda. Before having discussions with these committees, 
They were received and had discussions with the Speaker of the Chamber of Deputies, Honorable Donatian Mukawarisa, where she reiterated on the importance of exchanging ideas for the development of the people they represent. We believe in our capacity, our potential to learn from each other, and while addressing the common challenges facing uh, our people. In detailed discussions held with the standing committees of the Chamber of Deputies, it focused on various issues, such as how human rights are respected, implementing the gender equality principle, the current status of unity and reconciliation, and more. Honorable Charles Kamrem, who heads the delegation from Kenya, points some of the lessons learned. We have discussed a lot on issues to do with the bringing the unity of the nation, what they did after genocide, what they have done towards the uh, putting people together and working together, the legislations, the laws that they have put in place, and uh, why did they do that, how do they do that, and uh, the achievements, the implementation, and we have seen a lot. So we are also learning that process, because in Kenya we are having around 46 uh, tribes, and uh, we need to put together. We have our constitution, we are also doing well, but we need to learn, because we believe in one thing, that uh, Africa, and Africans have their own solutions. According to Ode Tuamaria, the chairperson of the Committee on Social Affairs, exchanging ideas play an important role in enhancing effectiveness in their responsibilities. The parliament or members of the parliament represent the population. The legislation process that we do and various programs that we follow up on all have an impact on citizens. This means that what they learn from us, they may implement it and that may have an impact on the population of Kenya. And what we learn from them, we may implement it and it may contribute to the development of the population of Rwanda. The delegation from the parliament of Kenya is on an official visit in Rwanda for four days and is expected to carry out discussions with various institutions, including the Rwanda Governance Board. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive Nete, for that report. And now, the Ministry of Education promises that the government will increase efforts in research to make it more productive because Rwandan researchers have a great opportunity to have research centers and international universities working in Rwanda. Jessica Agasaro has more on this report. The young researchers of the world who are part of the international organization Global Young Academy are asking African countries to increase their funding for research. It was announced in the 13th International Conference of Science and Technology Experts in Rwanda, which was attended by 200 people from 54 countries around the world. The director of the Global Young Academy in Rwanda, Eva Lilian Ugeneza, stated that the main obstacle is that until now, there's no effective interaction between researchers and other institutions. What we need is a platform where scientists, researchers, our leaders and other private institutions can meet and discuss about the kind of research that is needed to solve some issues. But since we don't have that platform, you will find that some researchers are done and they are not solving our own problem. This was also confirmed by Professor Prosper Ngabonziza, a professor at Louisiana State University and the leader of Global Young Academy in the world. He declared that the fact that research is expensive and that its results are available after a long time is what makes African countries not support research, as well as other rich countries because they have no interest in research that answers the problem of Africans only. Consider the problem of malaria in many parts of America. There is no such thing. It is only found in parts of Africa and South America. So you can understand why they don't have it, because they did research. What we need is a country to invest in science so that research can be done to solve the problem. We are just grateful to the government for the funds it has provided, but we need more support. Minister of Education Dr. Uwamaria Valentin reiterates that although Rwanda considered the importance of research, she also admits that there are still things that need to be improved so that the content of strategies and policies to promote research go from paper to classroom. She also emphasized that Rwanda has a unique opportunity to host them as it, it has international universities and international model institutions that have branches in the country. Young scientists are a crucial role in driving innovation and finding solutions 
to global problems. Their creativity, curiosity, and dedication are essential in addressing the challenges we face as a global community. In this regard, Rwanda is committed to advancing science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. We recognize their, their vital role in fostering a culture of scientific research and innovation. The meeting of the International Conference of Global Young Academy and the International Meeting of Experts and Researchers in Science and Technology started on Tuesday in Kigali and it will last for three days. Participants examined together the role of technology and innovation in solving the problem facing the world today. Jessica Agasaro, RTV News. In Nyarujenje district, four citizens are under prosecution for concealing information about the pit on which they built a house that later began to fall apart, and it was realized that bodies were dumped during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Shina Teta has more. In Chimisagara sector, in a place known as Chidirisha, is where five bodies were found that were thrown into a pit during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi carried out in this region that was occupied by Inhera Hamge who conducted the killings. After 29 years and having built a house on top of this pit, genocide survivors residing in this region identified where the pit was located and requested for the house to be removed, only to find five bodies of Tutsi who were killed during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. The five bodies are among the 20 bodies that were laid to rest honorably at the Nyanza Memorial Site located in Chitrichiro District. Genocide survivors say it is sad that 29 years have passed since the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi was stopped and bodies continue to be discovered, while those who know where they were dumped remain silent. <laughs> To be honest, we found the body of our parent here in this pit and we had for long requested for information about the people that were thrown in this pit here in what was called Chidirisha. The executive secretary of Nyarujanje district, Eminga Wanziza, expressed that individuals who lived in the house which was built on top of the pit knew information about the bodies thrown in it. The house started falling apart, which was a sign that there might be a pit here. We filed a report to destroy the house and find out. People who lived in that house knew about those bodies. The 20 bodies that were laid to rest were discovered in five sectors, which are Chimisagara, Kanyinya, Rugueza Meño, Majerajere, and Nyarujenje. And after, there happened the 29th commemoration of the Tutsi that were killed during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Shinateta. RTV News. Residents of uh, the areas of Kigali City that don't receive water say that once the expansion of the Nzove water treatment plant on the Nzove Nora pipeline is completed, they will have hope of getting clean water and avoid effects of using swampy water. We have more on this report. The district of Kigali City has different parts that do not have water to the extent that the residents complain of how difficult it is to access it. Here in Jisozi, we don't have water at all. We get a jerry can of water at 300 rondan francs or 400 rondan francs. People have become so frustrated with this place to the extent of wanting to move. We are always promised a change in circumstances, but it seems like we have been waiting for forever. We don't know what to do at this point. The solution to this problem is the Nzomenhora pipeline, which is 99% complete and will supply clean water to Umbogo, Jisozi and other parts of Kigali city. It is good news for the residents of these areas. It is really going to fix the issue of lacking water that we have. 
these pipelines are truly here to save us from what we have been going through. We thank the government of Rwanda for making this possible and making sure that we won't come across this issue again. We have seen the installation of new and big pipelines that don't leak and will be distributing water. From what I saw, we will all be able to benefit from the pipeline because it is big enough. During a visit to the expansion of the Nzove water treatment plant on the Nzove Nora pipeline by various officials on Tuesday, the Japanese ambassador who supported the project, Isao Fukushima, praised the progress of work and assured Rwanda that Japan will continue to be close in implementing development projects. Since 60 years, we have uh, diplomatic relations with Rwanda, and uh, now we have an uh, emphasis on. Uh, several fields of development like as a social infrastructure a water supply electric electricity distribution and uh, agriculture in particular the water supply is uh, one of the m most essential needs for the people yes. that's it for that reason we uh, uh, concentrated on these uh, fields. The expansion of the Nzove water treatment plant is an addition of more than 25,000 cubic meters in adding to the usual more than 60,000 drops per day. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructures, Abimana Fidel, says that Rwanda continues to work as much as possible so that its goal of providing water to all citizens will be achieved in the year 2024. Uh, this is one of the many water distribution projects that are in the works, like the Kigali Water Network, where we plan to distribute water to all of the other areas in Kigali that don't have it. The recent survey that was taken showed that around 80% have water, so we are hoping that soon we can be able to achieve our goal of 100% water access. The project to expand and build the Zovenhora water treatment plant pipeline started in February 2019. It is expected that it will end at the end of this month of June. It will be completed with more than 24 billion Rwandan francs and deliver clean water to more than 440,000 families around the city of Kigali and its suburbs. In Gahanga sector in Kuchushiro, a district and awareness campaign was initiated to sensitize citizens about the preservation of early childhood development centers, also known as ECDs, to, so that uh, they can be able to combat stunting while providing a balanced diet together with a proper education for children. Shina Teta with more. The awareness campaign was started with a visit to one of the early childhood development centers known as Vision Kamuyinga and observed was the children's education, nutrition, and looking at the foods that help this early childhood development center in feeding the children as means to combat stunting. The head of Vision Kamuyinga Early Childhood Development Center that was visited says that the center is of great benefit to the children and the parents as well because of the duties it fulfills. Some of the parents who have their children being raised in these early childhood development centers expressed how beneficial it has been to them. Before, it would be hard for me to leave my children at home and go to work, and sometimes I would take them and fail to get a job. But now, I prepare and take them to ECD, go do my job, and later come to pick them up and we go home. They acquire basic knowledge and learn a lot from ECDs. And when they come back home, they tell us about what they learned. The deputy executive administrator of Chitrichiro district, Has Monique, has it that taking care of a child's education and development from conception to adulthood is every parent's responsibility. When we talk about taking care of a child, we mean taking care of them starting from conception to when they have become adults, being breastfed well so that when they get to the winning stage, they are well fed as well. We urge all parents to take care of their children. Currently, there are about 164 early childhood development centers in Chitrichita district and more centers will continue to be constructed depending on the increase of the number of children. Shinateta, 
RTV News. Moving on to the agricultural sector, experts in agriculture and animal keeping say that the residues from some of the agricultural products, such as cassava peelings, can be processed to produce fertilizers and animal feeds, which they believe can reduce the cost of buying both fertilizers and animal feeds that are mostly bought from foreign markets. Shina Teta continues. Runners is a project that was launched by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in collaboration with the Sweden University, ETH Zurich, with an aim to jointly inspect new projects that can facilitate and simplify the work done by agriculture and animal keeping practitioners. On Tuesday, the last inspection phase for these projects was completed, and some of the individuals who implemented the inspection have expressed a few things. <laughs> We process them using specified machines according to the time frame set. It has helped to reduce the cost of animal feeds on the market. The Director of Agriculture and Natural Resource Unit in Kamuni District, Justin Mukiza, says that during the inspection of these projects, it was observed that those projects can help solve some issues in case they are implemented. <laughs> These projects are helpful as observed, given that a few days ago, animal feeds were so costly and scarce. These projects are one of the ways to solve that. The management of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, which is also the initiator of the Runners Project, says that there is need of more entrepreneurs in this field in order to provide for markets in other districts. We worked with three parties who helped in processing those residues in the district of Kamoni, and it has contributed a lot in those four years we have been operating. It is expected that in the next four years, these agricultural projects will also be initiated in other districts and provide trainings to different entrepreneurs. The inspection phase of these projects is believed to have consumed about 1 billion Rwandan francs. Shinateta, RTV News. Once again, we'd like to thank you for sticking with us on RTV News. And on behalf of the news production, production team and I, we would like to have a great night. And stay safe. My name stays Martina Avera.